You all right? My name's Paul, I've got autism, and I make random videos based on my version of autism, the way my head works, and I stick the videos on the internet in case you fancy giving them a watch. That's it, nice and simple. Right, uh, a couple of things, then a moan, and then I'll get onto the topic. So a couple of things, one is if I've got hair on me, on my top, not my face, I know I've got hair on my face, but if I've got hair on my top, it's because I've been wrestling with the dog. Um, and the other thing is I received an email where someone thought I was on Facebook. Um, so I'm not sure if it was mistaken identity, but I am not on Facebook. So if you are on it and you think you found me, please report um, that profile because it is not me, I promise. Okay. Um, and I'd appreciate that. There we go. Right. Moan time. I've, you know, you know, I love a moan. But I've I've been about this week, staying in all sorts of places, and it's just been a weird run, and I just want to sort of um, talk about it because I don't speak to humans. So it's, uh, you know, when you've just got all this stuff going on in your head, sometimes it's just nice to let it out. So I'd left my house on Monday, and I drove over to Liverpool, which is about an hour and a half, two hours on, on a bad day. Um, did the work there. Then I drove from there over to... Uh, Durham City Centre, which is quite a drive. Um, did a stay over in the Premier Inn, and it was a bad room. I all, I'm the unlucky traveller. All right, so I stayed in stayed in this room. It was right next door to the main entrance in a city centre, so that was nice and quiet. Not uh, the bed was broke, so it was really loud, and every time you got on it, it just disappeared towards the bathroom. So. You know, that wasn't fun unless you needed the bathroom and then it was a shorter trip. And uh, the towel in the bathroom had red dots on it. <laughs> I was like, is this blood? Um, so that didn't even get touched. Um, I did complain about that. Um, and then in the evening when I was having my evening meal, there was this family sort of sat a few tables away from me, like a grandmother, a mother, the father, and a couple of kids. And one of the kids was about four. And she was holding a drink, like a pint glass with one hand somehow. And the mum was like, use two hands, use two hands. And the kid wouldn't use two hands. So the mum took the drink off her and put it on the table. And the kid swore at the mother. Like, and I mean, it was a bad swear. Basically, she said, give me that drink back now. But she used an F word at the beginning of it. I nearly dropped my chicken wings. It was... You can't say that. And I, I just think of when I was a kid, if I'd have, I don't swear in front of my mum to this day, but if I'd have said that when I was a kid, my mum would have bounced me around the town, you know? It's just a sign of the times. And I know you can't, you know, clip your kids uh, these days, but where's the respect? You can't do that. And you can't let your kid get away with speaking like that either. You know, pour the drink over the kid's head. Do something to say you can't say that, but... Yeah, that was quite shocking. I was quite surprised at that. Um, and then I slept in my broken bed and I went um, and did my day on Tuesday. Then I drove from Durham City Centre down to Redcar in Middlesbrough. And I stayed in this hotel that I am never going to stay in ever again. It was the weirdest sort of introduction and setup. Uh, like I went in the place, I parked outside near these shops and I said, you know, where can I park? Have you got a car park? She's like, oh yeah, it's at the back. And I was like, right, I, I saw it, but um, it was full. And she's like, oh no, don't worry. Um, someone's gone. Someone's just left. I was like, oh, okay, perfect. She's, she's showing me on a pit. Instead of taking me to the car park, she get there's a big picture of the place on the wall and she's pointing and she goes, you see that garage? I didn't know it was a garage because I'm looking at the roof. And um, she's like, just park in front of that. So I go back out, get in my car, drive round, and one of their vans was parked in front of it. So I had to drive all the way back to the shops again, park up, go back in, and I went, there's someone parked there. She goes, oh, yeah, I know. Then why did you tell me to park in it? So then she says, well, actually, there's another space. So I drive back around, and it's here, pointing on the picture on the wall again. All right. So I, uh, I drive back around, and that space wasn't available either. So I just parked where I knew she could see me on CCTV with my arm out the window like where am I supposed to go and then she parked me in a, a bay which was designed for a motorbike I assume it was absolutely tiny 
So we got into a little argument about CCTV because I was just asking if she had it and she said, we do. And I said, well, just in case someone dinks my car because of how tight these spaces are, I'll, I'll need a copy. And she started telling me, health and safety person, that I'm not allowed a copy of it. It was like, of course I am. I can put in a data request and get a copy of it. You can't deny me. And besides, where's your signage? You need signage up if you've got CCTV. Don't quote to me. So <laughs> that wasn't a good start. And then I went in, saw this lounge and just said to her, is there any way I can work out of there? She was like, yeah, but I can't promise no one else will come in. I'm not bothered they can come in. And then the weirdest thing happened, and it was like a scene from a TV show. And to this moment, I still can't fully wrap my head around it. But I was in the lounge, I was doing some work on the laptop, and this couple come in, this old couple, um, and they sat in the lounge, and then the husband fancies a drink. So he sees the woman walking past. He worked there, the one I'd been talking to, and he said, excuse me, where do we get a drink? And she goes, oh, it's the lounge you're in. So walked him back into the lounge. She pointed to a hatch on the wall and goes, you've just got to ring the buzzer at the hatch and someone will come round and open it and give you a drink. And he goes, no problem. So he comes over to the hatch, rings the buzzer, the hatch opens and it's her. Like, what can I get for you? <laughs> As if she'd never seen him before. It was just... What I'm getting at is it was a really weird place and it's now on my list of places. I'm never going to stay again, just like the uh, premiere in, in Durham. So, um, yeah, just having a bit of a moan at that. And then I came home tired um, <laughs> Wednesday evening and I'm still recovering. And right now it's dinner time on Friday. So the Friday I put the video up because I haven't done one and, you know, I'd I've got to admit, I'm probably going to take a break and not do any videos for a little bit because I'm tired and burning the candle at both ends. And uh, I just need to recharge a little bit, but I'll let you know when I'm not going to do any videos. All right. So thanks for letting me moan, having my little waffle. I appreciate it. And now we've got to talk about the topic that's in my description, and that is sex. So don't you worry your pretty little heads about anything. I'm not going to go into gory details. I'm not sharing my moves. You know, I'm not, I'm not a playboy. I don't do anything like that. But I have referenced it before, and I've referenced intercourse before, fornication and all that jazz, saying I'm just not bothered about it. Now, that got a lot of attention <laughs> from people basically saying, what do you mean? I don't know what you mean. What do you mean you're not interested in it? Do you not like it? Are you not into women? Are you what I, I don't understand what's the and it just got a lot of curiosity. So I thought what I'd do is I'll try and keep it very light and very simple and very obvious and very easy to talk about because there's no reason to go into depth, but try and expand more on why I'm just why it appears like I'm not so bothered. All right. Plus, I'm getting older. I prefer a cup of tea and some toast these days. Um, you know, and when you're young, you rip all your clothes off, mad for it. And then uh, when you're older, it's like, I don't want to crease my top. I'll, let me just fold it up, you know, so the magic goes, doesn't it? Um, I've got a couple of points on my screen. I'm not sure if I'll use them much, but I just think it'd be interesting to talk about from my autistic perspective. Um so what I've got down on my little list is to talk about that I'm not driven by lust. So I don't know if I've got lust, but I've never been driven by it. You know, I can find people extremely attractive, but I've never had that urge that I just can't. Like George, for example, my dog, at the minute, he is a dog on heat. He is after any female dog knocking about. And even if I've like got a bit of sweat on me, he licks the sweat and starts doing that flamen response where his jaw chatters and he drools everywhere. It's like, mate, me and you are never going to, it's never happening. But he gets really sort of fixed on it. Now, I've never had the human equivalent of that where I've just been mad about it, you know? So I don't know if it's, if I've never allowed myself to give in like that, to allow myself those feelings or if I just don't have it in me. Either way, I'm not bothered, you know, because it's, it's like the old jokes, isn't it? It's like the only way I can make a woman moan is if I leave the bathroom light on. Uh, takes me longer to get undressed. Yeah. Um, 
this is why I don't do comedy anymore. Um, but if I start picking things apart, I think it's because there is that divide of neurotypical people and autistic people, especially people who fall into my autistic category, because what you'll find is what people will tell you, there's usually another response, a response that we've got, a response that makes more sense to us. So when people say things like, just go with the flow, you know, like when something's going to happen, it's all oh, just go with the flow. No, <laughs> I'm not just going to go with the flow. You know, it's because to me, you've got go with the flow and then you've got the artistic part, which is obviousness. Now, if you're in a relationship and you are, I'm just going to play the relationship cards. I don't endorse one night stands and um, children born who end up in the care system just because people decide to strip off and bump uglies. You know, I, I want to make sure, you know, when kids come in the world, it's for the right reason. But, uh, you know, when you're in a relationship, for example, and you've not, you know, smooshed booties together, um, there comes a time when it's probably going to happen. You know, you've spent time together, you've dated, you're staying at each other's properties and all that jazz, you're having a kiss and a cuddle. But then people are like, oh, you know, if it happens, it happens. It's like, no, because you both know it's not a surprise. You're going to be somewhere comfortable. The curtains are going to be shut. No one else is going to be around. You know, there's quite a few signs that this is happening. You might have, you know, Barry White playing on your CD player. You might, you know, have some candles out. The signs will be there. It's not like you're, you know, down the cheese aisle in Costco and someone jumps your bones. That would be like, oh, where did you come from? I wasn't expecting that. So when people say go with the flow, there's an obviousness to it as well. So for me, I I struggle in that department because it's like, well, this is obvious. It's blatantly going to happen today. You know, why can't we just talk about it? <laughs> why do we have to pretend that we're in a TV soap and these things just happen? It never just happens in any state, you know, unless somebody's, you know, been unfortunately... Uh, inebriated past the point of uh, consciousness, but it's obvious. And that's where I struggle. It's like, what do you mean? Go with the flow. You know, surely if we chat about it, it might just help. I don't know. Um, so I, I struggle with that. Okay. Um, and, you know, what it should mean to people, that can have different interpretations too. So. I I have lots of things that I cannot do because of the way I am, you know. So I suppose it's a bit like sensory overload. Um, so, you know, like I say, some people have different interpretations. So they, some people, as you know, will still not, well, they will consummate the marriage. They will do it when they're married. Some people do it because they bought them a bag of chips. You know, I, there was a girl in my school not kidding, would give you uh, a trouser kiss if you bought her a two-pack poster. That's the truth. And people would be going to the local market, buying a poster, a two-pack for 50p, getting to school, giving it to her, and she would, you know, do a thing. So there's just a different range of why people do what they do. You know, so for me, I need to know the person. I need to like the person. I need to get used to the person for me to be able to feel comfortable to do it. You know, I can't just, you know, especially now I'm getting older, you know, you can't just go out to a nightclub and pull some, you know, random piece of sexiness that's out there and end up back at her place, my place, and then start going at it like the clappers. I don't know them. You know, I don't. Have you got a middle name? What's your star sign? You know, <laughs> how old are you? <laughs> I don't know anything about that person, so it's difficult because if I, I don't do anything in life where there's unknowns to it, you know, everything has to be planned, considered. I have to have a strategy for it, a process for it. So when it comes to that, what makes you think I'm going to be any different? I'm not. I'm going to be exactly the same. I still need process. Things need to make sense. I need to feel comfortable in my surroundings. And like I say, when things are unfamiliar, I don't know where I, you know, 
is is someone going to kick that door in and just come charging through in a minute and say that's my girlfriend i need to know these things you know so different interpretations for different people for me obviously has to mean more because there needs to be a level of comfortability to it relaxation has to be there i need to be able to close my eyes and switch off a little you know to be able to be where i am otherwise i'm too worked up and it's why would you do anything if it's never enjoyable you know the event can't be enjoyable if i am not able to enjoy it so <clears throat> you know that's that's one of my barriers i i need to know that person um, but i'll come back to that because i want to talk about sensory overload um i've got down here clear direction versus mood killer and what i mean by that is a, it's almost a bit like the go with the flow people like to pretend that it's a surprise when people are gonna have sex it's not it is absolutely not and for me i like to because I'm, I've already talked about comfortability, I like to know who the person is. Chances are I'm dating that person. So you have a lot of open conversations when you're with that person. And it's a case of, right, what do you like? What are you not like? Where's my no-go zone? Where's, you know, what? And, and that way, you know, it for me, it gives me sort of a, a boundary. It gives me a, a yes and a no. It allows me to, you know, find my flow, if that makes sense, so I can go with the flow and stay within those controlled boundaries. Like, again, I do in life. I have boundaries of things I can and cannot do. I like to know for that as well, because if I know for that, you know, th th there's nothing worse than when you're at home and then someone just shows up at your back door when you were expecting them. You know what I mean? So imagine if you're in the throes of passion and someone just comes knocking at the back door, you'd be like, no, go around the front. You know, that this door's locked, mate. We don't open it. Um, so I just, where, so I like to know what people like, you know, not like dialing in a radio and they're like, get off, I'm not into that. All right then, but I would have preferred to have known before I start messing about because that knocks me confidence. Because I'm an anxious wreck as a human being anyway, that is an anxiety-ridden event, especially when it's the first time, first couple of times. You're like, oh, you know, I need to get used to this before I can find me flow. So if I can, you know, if, if I can be a mood killer by having my clear direction, my clear direction makes it a better mood when it actually does happen. It's not like we're, we're, we're trying to find the boundaries whilst we're going through it. You wouldn't be I don't know, building a bookcase and just guessing on the fly, would you? You'd, you'd have your instructions first. You'd know what you were doing. You'd make sure you had the right equipment for the job. And then you would start going at it and you've got a better chance of that bookcase being built better. It's, you would have had a better experience because you knew you had what you needed at the time. I just think to me, it makes more sense. So it's not a mood killer to have clear direction. I, I know there's going to be people out there going, glad, I'm glad I'm not in a relationship with him. Um, but it is good to rule things in and out. Um, something else I've got is when people say things like, just enjoy it, that go with the flow in a way, just enjoy it, just stop worrying, stop stressing, just, just enjoy it. But the problem for me, that is the equivalent of hearing, take your mask off. Take that mask off that you wear all day, every day, and it's the only thing that keeps you from uh, getting seen for who you are. You know, so if I take my mask off to just enjoy it, it means I am switching off. You know, I'm I'm now just free range. I am, you know, what if I make a daft noise, you know, because I'm loving it and I decide to make a noise like a cockerel. You know, I don't know what I'll do if I remain, because it's, it's all right, isn't it? on occasion so what if i do something daft and plus and this happened this week or last week i asked a question my head is full of questions and my questions that i ask are ridiculous and i know they're ridiculous but i would prefer to talk my stupid questions than talk about normal stuff because oh putin's still being daft over in ukraine isn't he yeah he's an idiot Oh, you can't say that. You're a con. I'm not interested in you. 
politics nonsense. It's stupid. It doesn't work. There's evidence. I want to talk about silly things because the more fun to think about. So this week, I asked somebody, and you're going to have to bear with me on this. I've not lost the plot. I asked somebody this week, do you reckon you could make a never-ending omelette? <laughs> and what I was saying to them was, I said, right, just imagine it. I said, you, you pour, let's say you've got a big vat of mixed egg and you're just pouring it into your frying pan and it starts to make, it starts to form. And just as it's still a bit wet and starting to form, you're starting to shuffle it, you tilt your pan and just get it sort of filtering out of your pan a bit. And then you pour more egg in. And then it sort of would be a continual process of the, you know, the liquid egg hardening, becoming solid, coming out of the pan while you're pouring more in, and you end up with this massive egg, a bit like a an omelet blanket. Now, imagine if I switched off and I asked that question, and then they pop back up and they're like, "What? What sort of questions that? You're meant to be in the moment." It's like, "Oh no, no, no! I am in the moment, but that's what happens to me when I'm in the moment. My head." goes to different places and my, me being in the moment allowed me to ask such a stupid question while I'm, you know, doing what you do. So, you know, it, what, what, what I'm trying to get at is there's always what people say and then what I do or want or need is the, is the negative. It's the, oh, come on, get over it. You're so boring. Why do you want to know that? Why do you want to do that? I'll get... And it's kind of like I'm taking the fizz out of the champagne. I'm not, I, I'm the, I'm what's, I'm taking what's, the, I'm taking the fun away and we're just left with the, the bare basics. But that's not true. I need clear, concise boundaries and I need to know what's a yay, what's a nay. And the more I feel comfortable with that, the easier it can be, you know. So, and, so just to bring it back to the sort of sensory part again, you know, the reason sensory overload matters to me is because I do not like being touched. I'm not really bothered who it is. If I'm not feeling it on the day, and it all depends on your temperature, you know. So if it's a hot day and I'm hot, don't come near me. If it's a hot day but I feel all right and you're hot, don't come near me. Same applies for cold days. If I'm cold, and you're cold. Don't touch me. I don't want to get colder. You know, if, uh, if the only time I'll touch you is if I'm absolutely freezing and you've got the warmth. You know, just the reverse. If it's an absolutely hot day and you feel like a freezer, give us a hug. But, you know, I don't hug people. I've hugged two people all year. One of them was my mum once. So I'm not a touchy-feely person. So for me to then, you know, strip off with someone else who was stripped off to then get that close to the breath, feel the skin, you know, against my skin. It's a very overwhelming sensory experience. So I have to be relaxed enough to allow that to not get overwhelming. And then it's a case of, I need it to be, you know, I need to take me time here because it's, I've got to process it. So it's not a case of, like I say, you know, casting eyes with a stranger across a busy bar, jumping in the back alley, having a, you know, a bit of a fumble and then going back in like nothing happened. No, I'm not your guy for that, you know. So what I'm trying to get at is having sex, the whole process is no different than how I am as a human being of how I operate anyway. I still need boundaries. I still don't want you close to me unless, you know, I get used to you, know you, understand you, because then my process is all right, because that's where I can start to relax, because I've evaluated you. I understand who you are, how you operate. You as a human being, you're not a stranger to me anymore. I don't like the unknown. You would be the unknown in that sort of situation. So everything I suppose I'm saying is what would be deemed as boring for everybody else i need and if i get that you'll get more of what you're after if you're after uh you know getting jiggy with it and all that so i wanted to talk about it but i wanted to talk about it in a, in a light way and i think i've done that um i hope you understand where i'm coming from 
because I'm not sure when I've just spoken there that I've actually made a point at all. But what I've found is I end up making more of a point when I don't think I have than when I think I have done <laughs> from your comments. So what I will say is thanks for watching. And until next time, keep smiling. <laughs>